I thought I'd start by asking um, about your views on sustainability. Um, you, um, I think we were, we were reading about your work and it seems that you were concerned with sustainability and ideas behind that before it was the fashion and before it was known to be necessary. So um, can you elaborate on that? Um, yes, well, um, yes, it certainly has become something of a sort of a, not only a, a fashion, but it's become almost a, uh, uh, almost a religion, or a, you know, a sort of sect or a, a you know, kind of enthusiasm that, Somewhat divorced, I think, at the time, from its roots. It acquired sort of political and uh, nanny state sort of uh, connotations. Um, and uh, like a lot of things, it goes through that sort of cycle of starting naturally, having good aims, and being well addressed by pioneers in the process. And then it becomes a convention, and then it becomes an imposition, and then it becomes ridiculous. Yeah. Um, and eventually it all collapses in a heap and then you start all over again, I suppose you could say. But, um, and uh, my fundamental philosophy is somewhat sceptical to start with. Um, so I haven't, uh, I, have, I haven't been comfortable with the way that sustainability is used as an excuse for almost anything, including whether it looks any good, you know, uh, because uh, fashion, but I kind of think an architecture ought to look good, even if it's a sort of stimulating, um, provocative, you know, almost a shock, yeah. still should have in, in, in it somewhere something about looking good um, and feeling good and touching good and all that stuff. But, um, so um, I suppose the, um, one of the fundamentals in sustainability is frugality which is a kind of um, sort of very basic uh, functional uh, aspect that um, the less materials you use, the more economical it will be. Yeah. Um, the, more, the less you use, the more, um, the more it fits the notion of the modern era that works with, uh, with only with what it has to, you know, it doesn't uh, waste, there's no waste in the notion of uh, mm -hmm. simple function. And um, when that became um, caught up in some of the uh, ideas about uh, regionalism and, uh, and context, um, I think this when the identification of um, sustainability started to emerge. Um, so does that tie then into your um, into your understanding then of what beauty is in architecture. So like, is it, would you say, pairing back and sort of a, um, a meaningful use of materials? Like a well, it's, a, it's, it's one of the issues, you know. I think if, if there are, I mean, I think the notion of pairing back goes right back into the new brutalism in, a, in its proper interpretation. I'm not quite sure how I'd put it. Um, there's a whole series of factors at work and if you deal with them all honestly and directly um, you'll finish up with something which is sensible and if it's sensible it's likely to be if you know, sustainable mm -hmm. one of the problems with sustainability is the definition you know, what is sustainable how you know, for what uh, for how long um, but what about the process of renewal you know is is um, is something lasting a long time more valuable than something that was replaced every now and then. Well, yeah. that depends what it costs and what it's used for, and so on and so on. Um, but even that kind of replacement and renewal can be a symbolic, uh, almost religious uh, venture, as happens in Japanese or in temple architecture, <coughs> which are replaced as a sequel related to a specific date, which happens to tie in with the durability of the timber. <laughs> so, so, you know, it, it, there's lots and lots of overtime. It's very, very complex. Um, I mean, the most um, overtly sustainable building idea was, was the, the exhibition halls at, uh, for the Olympics, which had a, a brief that the government had adopted that they shall be sustainable uh, in terms of the, the um, definition of it at that time in the mid-90s. What was the definition in the mid-90s? Well, it, it wasn't, you know, if 
was simple, but it was there were a whole lot of sort of issues about uh, you know transport, uh, the, you know, the, the economics of transport, the pollution aspects of the transport system, the, uh, the materials that involved certain kinds of mining or certain kinds of production, which produced um, perhaps carbon dioxide or produced um, particulate uh, pollution. So it was um, about embedded energy as well. Within embedded the... energy, all that sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah. It's, well, it's a well understood discipline, but at, at that point in the mid-90s there was a pretty a reasonable consensus in the governments who were funding all that stuff that they would have a policy that the building should be, should meet these sustainable things. And um, uh, so I set out to, to do that where it was possible. And, uh, at almost every turn you came to a, a choice of whether it was um, going to be distorted by sustainability in terms of cost and function or whether it was going to be symbolically sustainable. Um, mm -hmm. The choice enabled you to use something which got us a tick just by the nature of its, uh, what the material was. And a sort of classic example of it, there was lots of that in the, the building. Those buildings um, had almost every reasonably economically uh, attainable sort of feature of sustainability. Uh, chilled floor cooling rather than uh, air conditioning and a natural ventilator and they had you know, fire vent systems instead of uh, fire and insulations and so on. Uh, and they used timber, plantation timber particularly. And this one is a good illustration. We proposed that the working with our sort of structure, that the buildings were a timber structure, using sustainable timbers, uh, plantation timber. Mm. And um, the government was very, managers of very dubious about whether that was going to be possible. It's a very large building. Yeah. And uh, so it went to the point where um, all the sources were analysed and so on, and we did two sets of documentation, one for the timber and one in steel. Um, sufficient for the tenders to be established. And the margin um, for timber was at cost, I think it was 5% or something like that, which was only a, a small amount in the whole building, which was $100 million. Um, so that decision was taken. And then it ran into a sourcing problem. But the, eventually it in, involved emergency marshalling of every source of plantation timber in Australia and New Zealand and every possible factory, the bits were made all over the country and in New Zealand, to simply provide that many cubic metres of plantation timber and laminated timber in the time it was required. Of, uh, sort of 
thousands of these just pretty many times. Um, came to a, a point of um, some way of breaking out from that. And um, the steam engine and the back the road and the, the um, electricity, <coughs> the telephone and eventually um, flight, all of these sorts of things all happened in what we should in that context. Uh, so that you get uh, puzzling periods like, uh, say, the middle of the 19th century, where the Crystal uh, Palace uh, has a big glass uh, house, was built at the same time as the House of Parliament uh, in sort of high Victorian Gothic, um, where these things are sitting side by side in the same culture. Uh, and then you see, um, amazingly, to juxtaposed in a building like the uh, St Pancras uh, railway station, which has a uh, Sir Charles Gilbert Scott, um, a wonderful uh, Victorian high Gothic uh, red brick hotel and uh, uh, administration building um, wrapped around another one of these ones called Glass Railway roof domes. Um, so if you think of what kind of a intellectual puzzle that was in at the time. Um, it may be help you think of what sort of puzzle we have when uh, someone is doing some of those worrying the assertive uh, early postmodern buildings while other people are not busy building physically the actual problems. And I think probably it would help if we actually eliminate modernism and modernism from the equation and try to think of those, uh, those changes of style as, um, as developing out of a, another ism that isn't um, used with the overall pattern of the to do with the modern theory. Uh, and even when I was at university, we didn't talk about the modernism and the modernism. Thank you. 